uh, we are going to look at computer software yeah so uh, this is the other part of uh, computer that is very very important for us to understand i think so far we have uh, looked at um, the computer hardware in details yeah the various parts of the computer hardware we have also gone ahead and looked at uh, the network or computer network of course we have also looked at uh, some kind of security issues uh, and we have seen how to counter them yeah uh, we have also delved uh, to some point about social media uh, platforms and i'd requested people to have their linkedin <clears throat> i know where I'll go i'm going to request it yeah so make sure you have that uh, also we created a blog yeah i've also shared a video showing you exactly what you should do and i'd mention that at least we must have 10 posts minimum that's why i've given you a lot of time yeah so go through the video check of how on how we can or you can create a blog just a simple one and then you share the link yeah someone has already submitted but there's only one a post yeah so ensure that you do the right thing so of course today we're going to look at computer software and we are aware that a computer cannot operate uh, without a software right so when talking about computer software these are intangible parts of a computer yeah you will not be able to touch them but you can uh, interact with them yeah so we have different categories of uh, uh, computer software we talk of system software or operating systems we talk about programming softwares softwares that are used to uh, to develop uh, other programs or other uh, applications uh, also we have application software right so we have different categories of softwares but before that what is a software yeah what is a software so we we have said that it's just it is intangible yeah but a software is a set of instructions or programs yeah that assist or control how hardware performs or manages <clears throat> the different parts of uh, our hardware yeah so normally we develop softwares to achieve a particular or meet a particular objective yeah like for example if you go for a, a particular application program there's a reason as to why you're going for it and that's what you're going to look at yeah uh, also if you're purchasing a particular operating system yeah you need to understand why do you need that particular operating system why should you go for a window based operating system and not maybe uh, an open source option so <clears throat> the word software normally is abbreviated as shown yeah you will get it as sw or s forward slash w yeah so as you have mentioned it's a collection of instructions right actually it does a lot we are going to see specifically what uh, operating system does now this particular diagram should guide us on how the uh, software is very important at the bottom i believe you can see there's hardware yeah and as i had mentioned that uh, uh, software or specifically the operating system is tasked to control how hardware uh, performs or work yeah so for us to be able to handle the hardware or understand how do how hardware works we must have the operating system and that's why even if after purchasing a particular uh, computing device you'll always be requested to install what an os if it doesn't have one uh, if you get good people they'll always install for you the operating system why because you can't actually use uh, a computing device without a software even your mobile phone yeah if the operating system is not functional it, there's no need you can't be able to use it right so the os is very important uh, remember the boot up process the, the six stages yeah we said that the third stage of the boot up process is loading the operating system and the operating system actually handles all the tasks from uh, stage three all the way to stage six and of course we can't we really interact with the operating system and that's why we need application a uh, software yeah so application softwares are user end user programs that you interact with like for example today we are going to see how to use uh, microsoft word that's an example of application software 
right? So rarely will you uh, crack your head uh, on purchasing or actually understanding how operating system works. But for the application software, you'll always want to understand more because you'll be using it to uh, actually accomplish, uh, accomplish some given tasks. Like for example, if you want to design, you'll go for, uh, for uh, an illustrator, for a Photoshop, yeah? If you want to do some kind of uh, editing or managing text, you'll go for uh, proce word processors and so on, yeah? So application software sits on top of what? Of an operating system. So without an operating system, you can't have your application software. Then the last layer of interaction is the user, you, yourself, yeah? So uh, mostly, as I'd mentioned, you will not like need all the application softwares in this world, but you will specifically uh, uh, budget or purchase uh, some kind of application softwares in order to do it, uh, to help you uh, finish some given tasks. So this is a diagram that all of us need to understand, uh, just the same way we had looked at how the processor function. You also need to understand that particular diagram. So we have said that hardware can only uh, work if there's an operating system. Operating system uh, is there so that you can be able to do it, to use the application software. So all these particular softwares that you're talking about, yeah, they act, uh, they make things easier for the user. Yeah? They make things easier for you. So we are supposed to understand uh, how they work, the importance, and so on. Uh, again, there's a breakdown of the different categories of softwares as I've mentioned. Uh, of course, we have two major categories. That is the system software and the application software. So uh, normally, the system software is referred to as the operating system, or normally you use the operating system. So that is the uh, system software. But again, it's also, it also refers to the programming software. Yeah? So examples of programming softwares are like Java, right, uh, PHP, and so on. Then you have the utility softwares. Uh, remember when we are talking about uh, the fourth stage, uh, I mean the fifth stage, I mean it is the fourth stage of the Buddha process. We talked about system utilities. Yeah? So these are the essential softwares that the system requires uh, to maybe uh, handle uh, some given errors. We term them as the first aid kit tools, right? So, uh, with this kind of uh, roadmap, so let's try to identify the different uh, softwares in detail. So, as I mentioned, uh, the system software, we refer to it as the operating systems. Of course, the operating systems requires the, the device drivers, yeah? Now, device drivers are some kind of programs uh, device drivers are some kind of programs that are required so that the devices attached to the uh, computer are detected. Like for example, if you purchase, uh, if you happen to purchase a given uh, hardware, like let's say for example an external hard disk, yeah, it must have some kind of device drivers for it to be detected. Other some in some cases, if those d device drivers are not there, Normally, you get an error, uh, like for example, the device driver not found, or you can't actually see that particular device within your computer, right? Uh, application programs, you're going to look at them. Uh, examples are word processors, spreadsheets, name them, right? Uh, we also have programming, I've mentioned, yeah. Uh, programming software also, you can break them into different uh, categories, yeah. Because we have the uh, we have the high level programming softwares, the low level programming softwares, and so on. Uh, now, what are some of the features of a system software? Yeah, what makes it different from an application software? Uh, from the diagram, we could establish that it is close to the hardware. Yeah, so this is like. Uh, the hardware cannot function without it, yeah? So it's close to the system, yeah? It should be fast in speed, why? 
since we need it to boot up very very fast yeah normally it is very very fast yeah so it is programmed in a way that it doesn't drag as uh, like the application software uh, you will also be reminded that application software will keep on adding a lot of files every now and then yeah so it will become bulky with time but really will uh, system software uh, be bulky yeah so normally it's, it's smaller in size unless a major upgrade has been uh, has been executed then we have difficulty to design yeah now this is not for the normal user you are not even supposed to understand how an operating system works behind the scene yeah so we leave it for the technical guys uh, to be able to uh, give us uh, maybe tell us where the error is yeah are uh, the type of uh, system software that is best for application programs so on and so forth uh, then we also have uh, of course it's also difficult to understand yeah uh, it's less interactive yeah the the nature of an OS it uh, actually is very difficult uh, to interact with it because you need to understand how it was developed in the first place so really it doesn't have uh, of course nowadays things have we have moved, uh, there are some great steps uh, towards uh, development of system software. Uh, sometimes back we used to have DOS, yeah? so for you to be able to operate it, you have to have some set of command. But nowadays at least uh, it is kind of interactive in a way that you have the graphical user interface that you can be able to shut down the computer, you can be able to do one or two things. I've mentioned about its size. Uh, of course, the difficulty of system software will keep on repeating itself. Yeah? It's very difficult in all angles. Uh, of course, it's generally written uh, in low-level languages. So I've mentioned that we have different categories of programming languages, high-level languages and low-level uh, languages. Now, uh, low-level languages are languages that computer, almost computer, can be able to understand, yeah? like the machine languages. Yeah. So when you code a, a, a system software, you need to know uh, how the mouse is actually structured to coordinate with the what, with the with the operating system. Yeah. So uh, in fact, we have very few programmers or specific. We have a given group of programmers who can come up with uh, this particular uh, OS. So these are just a uh, few features of a uh, system uh, software. Of course, we. I haven't mentioned about the security aspect yeah it has we have said that uh, it also comes with some utilities that provides uh, some kind of uh, security features yeah so those are some of uh, the features of a system software of course uh, we have example yeah of ex uh, general computer software we have database device drivers and so on I think I've mentioned this uh, of course, internet browsers falls under the application softwares. Email also uh, falls under the application software. Again, any application that you'll find yourself using to achieve some kind of objective, uh, that is an application software anyway. It's not a, a system software. Uh, examples of operating system are as follows. We have uh, the Mac OS. We have the um, Ubuntu Linux. We have the um, Windows uh, 7. Of course, these are uh, obsolete, but they are, they are examples of operating system. We have Windows 8. We have Windows 10. Yeah. When we're talking about networks, also we mentioned the network operating system. Yeah. So we can also include the network operating system because they are under the category of operating system. Uh, we had Windows Server 2012 and so on. Uh, presentation softwares, these are application. Uh, programming softwares I've mentioned. We also have simulation uh, softwares. Uh, so if you want to uh, have a prototype of how a particular uh, environment is to function, like for example, if you want to have a flight simulator, you can use uh, the flight simulator uh, program. We have spreadsheets, uh, we have utility programs, we have already mentioned that, and of course we have word processor. So in our 
lesson, we are going to look into details about word processor yeah, as one of the software that you are going to interact with. So uh, always take note that operating system also is referred to as the system software. It is close to the, uh, to the hardware and therefore it communicates with hardware and allows other programs to run on it. So these programs are the application uh, softwares that I've mentioned. Yeah. So you can see uh, some uh, the diagram there showing uh, some pictorial representation of the different OS. Yeah. I hope you can name you can uh, name them. One is Windows. The other one is Ubuntu. That particular bad them. Uh, we have Android and you have the Apple uh, OS. And we have, a, have others, yeah, we have others. So <clears throat> we looked at the general features of, an, of, uh, of a system uh, software. You can, we can go into details about them, yeah. So you are told that every desktop uh, smartphone must include it, right, must have it. It creates an interface, remember the diagram that we first started with, yeah. It also provides the management of resources. So we're going to look at in details other functions of the OS, right? Uh, of course, we can also separate the, uh, the computer-based OS and also the mobile-based. Yeah. So for mobile, you can have Android, iOS. You have the developers, examples of the developers who develop this particular uh, OS. For the, mic for the Windows, operating system, we all know that these ones are from uh, Microsoft. Of course, we have Unix, oh, they are open source. We have Red Hat Linux, oh, yeah, uh, from uh, Red Hat. These are freely available. Uh, please take note, yeah, we have those particular open source softwares that you can freely download from the what? Uh, from the internet and use them, yeah. Uh, but we have proprietary, proprietary uh, software. <laughs> Sorry, that word is bringing issues. Yeah, proprietary, uh, proprietary softwares that you have to pay or purchase some license, such as the Windows. Yeah, so that you don't fall a victim of what, of piracy. Yeah. So there are those that are freely available, and there are those that are to be purchased. So don't say that Windows are freely available. No. Yeah. But some of us, you are good at what? At cracking and uh, using backdoors to you have this particular uh, software. Anyway, let's look at functions of the operating systems. Yeah. Uh, this particular diagram uh, shows the kind of uh, functions that the OS performs. Uh, number one. It goes without saying that it manages hardware resources. Yeah. So the question is, what kind of hardware resources are they managing? Yeah. Uh, it provides uh, interface between user and machine. Mm -hmm. You look uh, if you look at the diagram that you had, uh, we have already shared. You can see the kind of role it plays. Yeah. So the user doesn't need to understand how the hardware actually functions. Yeah. So it is the operating system that handles all those particular uh, tasks. Uh, maybe we have these functions elaborated uh, through text. So it also provides uh, security. Remember when you are logging into the machine, it is the operating system that established that particular order, a security mechanism for you to be able to do it. Uh, to enter your password and what username, right? Uh, of course, it also provides uh, utility softwares uh, for maintenance purposes, right? So uh, self-heal in case there are some kind of uh, a few errors that it can handle. <coughs> uh, normally, the operating system uh, does that. So these are some of the major functions uh, of the operating system uh, that you need to take note of. Yeah? Uh, management of resources. Yeah, uh, interface, security, and utility. Yeah, uh, <coughs> other additional. These are additional uh, functions. 
we can have job accounting now job accounting or accounting accounting or uh, means keeping track or actually trying to understand what happened within that particular uh, operating system so it keeps tracks of time and resources used by various jobs uh, jobs are kind of uh, instructions sent to uh, the processor uh, it also take control of a system performance yeah uh, it's kind of logs yeah when talk about logs we can have error logs delay logs yeah so all these log files are normally stored within the operating system like in case of a forensic someone wants to establish you maybe you said that you had shut down your computer between this particular time yeah uh, they are going to look at this particular uh, system performance the error uh, the the logs files uh, to see whether it is true that you sh you did shut down the computer at the stated time uh, of course uh, it also uh, uh, creates an uh, interaction between different or multiple operators uh, it could be operation from the hardware itself uh, operations from or uh, operations from you yeah through in instructions yeah uh this is a repeated a repetition like error detecting error detecting we said that these are what utility software that does that uh, and of course it offers coordination between the different softwares that are installed in the computer if you remember that uh, the functions of the processor right uh one key uh one key thing that allows the processor actually to process the instructions is the what the operating system yeah so it tries to help the processor interpret right what has been sent to it so it does a lot of things uh, compile uh, those particular instructions and so on uh, what should you look for yeah what should you look for when going for an operating system or what informs you of the choice of an operating system one thing you need to take note of is the application that you want to use like for example i can't bring or i can't use a mac like uh, if i'm using a, a like for example some kind of microsoft based applications yeah i can't go for a mac os so we need to really know what are we going to use uh, this particular uh, OS for? So one, establish the application software that you are going to install. Uh, again, uh, what kind of hardware is going to sit or handle this particular operating system? Compatibility issues, are they compatible? Remember, uh, if I didn't tell you this, then I think I must have mentioned it within the tutorials. Uh, if you right click on the my computer you'll be able to see the various specifications of the computer so it will enable it will enable you establish uh, the kind of uh, the kind of uh, specifications of the of the hardware that you have like the the processor speed the ram that is installed there right uh, the bus address data path and so on yeah so we need to establish what kind of hardware does the operating system run on yeah uh, compatibility issues because if you bring a heavy a bulky or purchase a bulky os then your hardware doesn't have the right specification uh, chances are you will not even install it in the first place yeah it is going to tell you a hardware not or os not supported um how quickly does the operating system run is it a server based os or is it a client based os right so for the server based we we'll know that server is a very dedicated computer so chances are the operating system will be very active almost every time but for the op uh, the client operating system uh, mostly you will uh, shut down the machine if you are not using it so uh, we need to establish whether it's a, a client operating system or a server-based operating system that you're going to run. 
how easy is it going? How fast or how easy is it for you to handle that particular uh, operating system? Is this something that you must learn first how to use before you purchase and install? Do you know how to install that? And I think this is uh, related to the last point within the slide. Yeah? Do you have the right technical knowledge or technical assistance for you to be able to use uh, this particular operating system? Yeah? Uh, I have had some kind of request a number of times uh, when people are migrating uh, from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Yeah? So people had challenges. How do they configure their OS so that at least it provides the right working platform? So we need to have some kind of uh, uh, technical expertise or understanding of how this particular uh, OS works. Again, uh, sorry. Now, uh, looking back at the kind of the operating system, uh, we need to establish whether it's a network-based OS or a client-based OS. I think this is tied to uh, the explanation that I had earlier. So uh, if you're using uh, or if you're setting up an office or a networked office, you can't invest only on the operating system for the clients. You also need to purchase a uh, operating system for the network to manage for a uh, network to be able to manage the resources yeah uh, of course if it's a network uh, we need to establish whether it has strong multitasking capabilities so that users can access uh, network resources without issues yeah how reliable is that operating system uh, again we need to look at the user manual or the system uh, documentation yeah look at maybe the kind of uh, uh, issues that this particular os has like for example if you are going for a network operating system yeah this is not just a normal operating system it is going to manage uh, your network and this uh, network means your clans so if your clans keep on um, complaining that they can't access some given resources uh, because of the operating system uh, then that is there's a problem so we need to see or understand how reliable this particular operating system is uh, before actually embarking to use it uh, of course the cost factor comes into play yeah uh, you need to invest on this particular operating system i've said that those ones that are open source that those ones that you need to purchase yeah and lastly we have looked at uh, the technicality how easy do you have support online uh, if you have issues are you able to uh, call someone to be able to assist you so those are a few choices of uh, an operating system and what you should uh, look for uh, then let's look at the application software yeah normally referred to as app yeah uh, apps yeah so we have different applications very many we have mobile based application software a computer-based application software, right? Uh, they assist us users to achieve or accomplish uh, some given tasks. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you want maybe to design a simple, uh, like for example, an image, yeah, or a website. Yeah. You realize that you need some specific application programs to help you uh, do that particular task. Yeah. So rarely will you like just install applications uh, within your computer without actually understanding the need of that particular application yeah so like for example why do you need a photoshop if you are not using it it is going to consume a lot of uh, resources so sometimes if you don't need an application just remove it so that you make your a computer a little bit uh, perform a little bit faster than expected right uh, I know most of us we have games yeah and these ones are the ones that occupies a lot of our, <laughs> our computer storage now features of an application software just the same way we had looked at uh, features of the OS uh, also the application softwares they have their features of course these are, these ones are now closer to us we interact with them on a daily basis right so they are closer to the user. Uh, being closer to the user, they 
must be easy to understand. Again, if you have issues with understanding how to use it, you need to uh, maybe uh, look at some kind of uh, tutorials on how you can uh, use those particular application software. Uh, it's easy to design uh, with the user in mind. Uh, users can always tell you that, can I have uh, this particular application to do this? Yeah? So they are very easy to, they are more interactive. Yeah? The graphical user interface, yeah? you have the icons, you have what, everything is there. So you can interact with them uh, very, very fast. They are slow in speed because of the interaction with the processor. Uh, remember the stages through uh, how the processor actually interacts with the application. Yeah. You are the user who interacts with this particular uh, application software. So chances are you are going to be sending a lot of instructions to what? Uh, to the processor. So that means it will take time yeah, for it to actually be, uh, maybe for the processor to open it at some point. Yeah. It will hang at some point, yeah, based on how you interact with it. So we also have, uh, it is easy to understand, of course, it is developed in a high level language, yeah, a language that a user can be able to understand. Yeah. So there are some kind of uh, programming languages that are categorized as high level languages that at least you as the user, as a layman, can be able to uh, uh, to uh, to use uh, now we also have it, this particular issue of size yeah so the more content you add to your application software uh, the the bigger the size and that will inform you on the kind of storage uh, media to actually use yeah so remember we talked about the various storage uh, media so you need to understand also prior to having this particular application software yeah uh, do you have enough storage area to be able to store all these particular uh, files and documents so these are some of the features of application software that you will be expected to understand our examples we have many i mean anything that you find yourself interacting with as a user mostly to uh to do some kind of task that is just an application software yeah uh, payroll like right now we are, we are interacting via the web browser yeah so almost everything uh, application that you're using to achieve a particular objective that could be an application so we can't list them all of them here so those are just examples uh now the widely used are the microsoft based applications because Rarely will you install an operating system without having these particular uh, packages. So we have the spreadsheet. So if you want to know more about uh, maybe how the financial data can be managed, how you can do some analysis, yeah. So uh, Microsoft Excel is the right application to use. Yeah, of course it has its own features that we are not going to uh, talk about right now uh, yeah okay okay I uh, captured some okay they allows users to uh, design graph graphs uh, do calculations uh, data analysis I think I've already mentioned this yeah uh, I think also the the good thing with the spreadsheet is that it has the formulas that allows you to quickly do what uh, perform some uh, calculations that you cannot maybe do uh, on your own. Remember the arithmetic logic unit of the processor. So this one is what or why the processor is actually uh, powerful. And if there's one application that was the first one to be used was the spreadsheet. Yeah, If you look at the history of application programs, yeah, one of the application programs that actually was used for the very first time was the calc and the spreadsheets yeah uh another one is uh, the database yeah we have different categories of database talk of um, of course we have the access we have the oracles and so on yeah so a database are normally used to help a user retrieve data 
yeah, store data in some kind of uh, manner. Yeah. Uh, it pr provides actually a way to arrange our data uh, in some kind of way that we can always uh, retrieve them uh, whenever possible. So uh, databases are also application programs that we need to take note of. Uh, presentation applications, of course, the one that I'm using is a PowerPoint. Yeah. So this one allows the users to uh, create some presentation. Yeah. You can uh, use this particular platform to interact with your audience. Yeah. Uh, now, here is where we are, and this is the application program that you are going to uh, make use of for the uh, next couple of weeks. Yeah. So we are going to look at word processors in detail. Yeah. Uh, from the OC, I've already shared the, uh, the necessary links that will help you do that. Yeah. So word processors as you can see the definition right allows you to manipulate text you can add some images apply some basic designs we have two versions yeah the one that you can access via uh, google is an is a google app actually uh, they normally refer to it as google docs right and of course we also have uh, the one that is installed within your computer that doesn't require internet uh, that is the offline application so we can go ahead and talk more about uh, softwares in terms of application uh, uh, softwares programming softwares uh, system softwares and so on and so forth so we as we proceed with maybe engaging in computers we are going to at least meet uh, some of them uh, in details